Ah. Hey, my friends. Hope you're all doing amazing. Obviously, we're in a little bit of a different location today. We are pretty much out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and uh, now this is Wyvernhoe Dam. It's a beautiful spot, uh, about an hour from my house. And I love coming here with my family. It's an amazing place. But um, yeah, I just thought we'll change it up a little bit. And today we're actually going to be talking about this thing right here. The Sony ZV E1. Now, I've used this for what maybe three months now i had it probably about three or four weeks before the actual release then i went over to japan uh, with sony australia for the release of this went to singapore for a holiday with my family i uh, have been interstate a couple of times taking this with me day trips like this taking this with me it's just one of those cameras that you literally take everywhere and Look, today I'm gonna to be talking about some of the pros that I love about this thing, some of the cons that I don't obviously like about this thing. Uh, they'll be mixed in between because some of the pros are where some of the cons come from. Um, but, you know, I've had so much experience and time with this that I just feel like it's time for me to, you know, do a little bit of a unwind my thoughts three months after. So, here we are. Sony ZV-E1. Now, one of the major pros that I love about this camera has to be has to be the form factor. You know, it's so small, it's so compact, and like I said, it's one of those cameras that you literally just take everywhere because it weighs pretty much nothing. You throw a lens cap on there, and you can put it into a side pocket, into a bag. You can literally fit this in your pocket if you really wanted to with the lens cap. And lens cap, body cap, the camera body cap. And it's just like, it's the form factor is just so good that it's just one of those cameras where you're just like, why not? The specs are amazing, it's so small, I may as well just bring it anyway because you never know if I really need it, if I need those kind of specs or low light performance. But I guess that's where one of the cons come from is that it's such a small body, it generates so much heat and I've done so many different heat tests and you guys know it overheats. And obviously it's really long record times that overheats but shooting normally, like I normally do, uh, traveling stuff, uh, Instagram work, YouTube work, client work, the basic stuff, it's never overheated once, not ever, because I do 15 to 30 second bursts, something like that. I never really roll any longer than that. If it's an interview, I've got my FX6, you know, that's all my professional work I got. The FX6, the FX30 for all my really high and professional work that I know I need a reliable workhorse. That's, that's them, that's where that's where they go. So I am lucky that I have that. And when it comes to stills, obviously the A7 IV I'm recording on right now, uh, that covers the stills. This is just one of those things that, you know, you I want for video and the overheating is an issue for some people, but for me, it's just not an issue at all. But that's where I choose those other cameras over this. And when it comes to that overheating, obviously the specs, the specs are incredible. The A7S3 sensor. So you're looking at that to dual base of 640, 12,800. So incredible low light performance. We've also got 4K60 uncrop. So full frame, 4K60. The A7 IV that you're seeing on right now has that crop in 4K60. And obviously my FX30 is a crop sensor. And obviously my FX6 is a big beast and I can't take that everywhere. So 4K60 in this small body, and then 4K 120 will be coming in a firmware update later this month slash July. Not 100% sure, but I can't wait for that. Also, I've got some new shirts, so if you want some of these shirts, I press them myself and I will send them off myself as well. Um, link will be in the description below. Give this video a thumbs up, subscribe. Let's get back into the video. The kind of specs you get out of this is just it's mind-blowing. Image quality is one of the most important things at the end of the day. And I love, love low resolution sensors because they're not crazy tack sharp like the A7R5 and the A7 IV because they're high resolution sensors. You get so much detail, sometimes it's really good, but sometimes you want a little bit of a softer image. So you go for a Pro Mist on top of this and yeah, that's the kind of image you get out of it. One of the cons, I guess, about that, because it has all those specs inside this body, is the price. And I know a lot of people don't like the price. And it's a, not a con for me. I ended up picking up one after I returned one from Sony. 
uh, because I had the white one and a black one on loan from Sony for ages and finally got my own copy which is great but the price is I think worth it because of the specs are just incredible you've got so many features in here the AI processor that's out of the a7r5 so the autofocus is incredible you've got the image stabilizer which is like gimbal like you've got the dynamic active steady stability which is gimbal like as well incredible uh, and obviously the image quality in 4k 120 soon 4k 60 now it's just incredible you've got so many features in this i do think it's worth the price and sure it is pricey for a lot of people but for me it's perfectly fine uh, because i will be using this I, but for me you know it's perfectly fine because i've used this for a lot of different situations especially um, paid instagram uh, social media all those kind of things this thing is really good to use and speaking of the, that dynamic active stability, that's definitely one of my favorite features. Uh, it, when you walk forward and back, like it's, it's almost like using a gimbal, literally almost like using a gimbal. I cannot explain, you, you've seen it. If you go to my Instagram, <laughs> I mean, I've done like 10 reels on how good this uh, stability is walking forward and back. But then the corner of that is literally when you're panning left and right and trying to follow someone. It's a little bit average, but it does the job, especially forward and back. And I really hope they can fix that in a firmware update, but I also cannot wait for them to bring that into a different uh, camera system as well. And also a second con with that is that 30% crop. Man, that's a heavy crop. And because it's only a 4K sensor, it's a 4.2K sensor, so you do lose a little bit of resolution, ends up being not as sharp. Um, but another pro of that is, you can see here, this is an APS-C lens. So because it crops in enough, you can actually throw APS-C lenses on there and account for that wide angle and still have really nice wide angle, fast apertures, cheaper lenses. I mean, whichever way you look at it, that's a pretty good pro. So, uh, you know, it's kind of one of those uh, glass half empty sort of situations, whichever way you want to look at it. Uh, but overall, just using this for, you know, over three months, this thing has just been so good. The size is probably one of the biggest factors that it just makes it good because you can just take it everywhere and really if you don't need to use it then you don't need to use it but if you do want to use it it's super light super compact like you can literally just put it on a shoulder clip you can put it on a lanyard it's not going to be heavy it's going to be so easy to use if you are a beginner if you are a professional this thing just does almost everything but oh my god that scared the crap out of me I'm out in the middle of nowhere um, and things are just popping up and that legitimately <laughs> scared the hell out of me. Um, look, overall, it's a great camera, but it's not for everyone. Obviously, Sony are one of those brands that they have so many different cameras in different categories that you need to choose the right tool for the right job. The A7R series obviously has that high resolution. The Alpha 7 IV sort of series is that hybrid. The A7S series is the low light video. You've got the FX line, which is pretty much your cinema line. Um, and you've obviously got your ZV line or ZVE line, ZVE 10 line. <laughs> There's so many different cameras that if you don't want to buy this, look, don't buy it buy a different one um hey if you don't want to invest your money into sony then don't invest your money into sony i want you guys to choose the right camera for the right situation in your situation because everyone's different everyone does different things but the way i look at it is that you are a craftsman you need tools in your toolkit and this is one of my tools the a7 IV is another one of my tools the fx30 and the fx6 and other tools in my toolkit and they all have specific purposes and at the end of the day that's what you really really need to consider so anyway my friends it's getting dark as you can see um i think i might finish it off there so thanks for watching and i hope this was useful 
And if it was, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And uh, I do have some new shirts. So if you want to pick these up, the link will be in the description below. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Let's get it. Thank you.